raise your hands, automaticians. <laughs> okay, so I'm very glad to be here. Uh, another reason for me to be very excited today, this is my first WordPress talk outside my country, India. Uh, other than the talks I've given to my colleagues, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to speak today not too much about uh, the software and the code part of it, which I leave to my colleague Sudipto. Uh, I'm going to speak uh, drawing experiences from what brought me to WordPress uh, and to the community. Uh, it's about something which is core to WordPress, which is to help people publish their ideas or what I call in my words, create their own medium. So my background, uh, just to give a very quick introduction, I have been a happiness engineer uh, doing technical support and uh, wrangling happiness for automatic since uh, January 2017. I've done quite a few odd jobs before that. And uh, what brings me to WordPress and uh, what got me actually into digital ma marketing itself, not just WordPress, is a community project which I did for my ethnic community based in India uh, called as radioidli.net. Uh, just to break it short, it was a website which began in Blogger with embedded YouTube and uh, multimedia content. And just when I discovered there is WordPress.org, I moved it to a self-hosted WordPress site. And that's where my learnings about websites, about hosting, about analytics, about marketing, uh, way before Facebook it hit India, uh, things like uh, I used uh, stuff like uh, Yahoo groups, Google groups, and other discussion forums. So all those learnings came from this small community project. So yes, we are here as WordPress community, but this ethnic community project also gave me a lot of uh, insights. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to share bits of uh, what I gathered from that experiment, which finally led me to where I am today, uh, enjoying a good career in WordPress itself, right? So yes, uh, another disclaimer, I'm not good with coding yet. <laughs> so I just know HTML, CSS, I know that uh, if you show me a, a code of a theme or a plugin, I know what that particular PHP loop does, but if you ask me to write it from scratch, uh, I will need help from colleagues <laughs> or the experts, right? So why am I choosing this topic? All of us are, when we mention the word ideas, the first thing that comes to our mind is perhaps Albert Einstein or those uh, Silicon Valley entrepreneurs or uh, inventors the founding fathers of WordPress or other projects, right? But let me tell you, each one of us has what's called as ideas or sparks within us, right? So if we are ready for a quick call of hands, let's do this together, right? So how many of us felt this in our mind? I can write well, I can rhyme well, maybe a little bit, but I'm not a writer nor a poet. So how many of us have felt this even in a, a slightest sense? Don't be shy. <laughs> Right? Ideas? Okay, I'm okay with singing. I have my own style, my own genre, <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if I can really dare to take it out beyond the bathroom. <laughs> right? So how many of us have felt that? <laughs> Rahul, <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> I've been there as well. Uh, I'm not a politician. Oh, politi politics is dirty, right? Uh, and I'm not a journalist, I don't write for any newspapers, but yes, I do have a political opinion, or I have an opinion about things happening around me in my country, in my locality, in my community. How many of us have felt that? Quite a few of us. Sometimes we have felt the need to do something about it, write about it, express. Well, we are talking about ideas. I'm not a qualified teacher, since we have teachers here as well. I would like, but I would like to study together, if not teach, with a larger community of students or interact with teachers around the world. We do, we do feel things like this. Now, quoting Seth Godin from his famous uh, TED talk, ideas, all of us have ideas, but those ideas which spread very well, they succeed. And they end up creating what we call as impact, and they end up changing things around the world. I was just mentioning that Matt Mullenweg was a blogger, was a journalist at that, at that point in time with CNET. He had a personal, uh, what's called as a developer's itch to make a better blogging software which could understand emojis and symbols better. And that became the founding point of WordPress, which, uh, which is today 30% of the, the internet, right, of all the websites. 
So it all begins with ideas which spread because of some good purpose, because of various reasons. Uh, of course, the talk gives an, a good uh, reference about how do ideas spread. So all of us have our ideas. Uh, and even if we think we do not have our own ideas as WordPress professionals, we help our clients uh, and many other people, maybe our friends, our relatives, we help them spread their ideas. And that's why ideas always need a proper medium to propagate, to spread out, right? And that's where the role of WordPress as a, uh, as a, as a content management system or as a software came into my life for my small community project. And today it's powering some of the largest projects as well, right? Now, uh, why is it that a CMS like WordPress can really create an Im immense impact which perhaps was not possible in the past? Or it was, not, uh, it was perhaps in the hands of only a, a powerful few? Uh, in the past or even till now, for, to, to some extent, a successful medium happens if you have great infrastructure and good distribution. So infrastructure is where you bring the ideas, host it or print it and then it goes about and it has to be distributed through, through a vast network. Whether it's the newspaper boy who wakes up at 4 a.m. and gets that newspaper to your home or uh, the so many stores and uh, places from where you pick up your uh, reading material. So, uh, or even uh, vast amounts of money being spent in marketing through digital or any other medium to make things uh, spread out, right? But the good point out here is, back in the past, if you had to have a very powerful medium, you need to, had a, you need to have a very good press with those huge printing machines, lots of paper, uh, lots of cost to procure that, which means you, and of course it's a regulated uh, industry as well. So you needed to have uh, some good industrial backing, which means good finance, some deep pocket, the promoters. And of course you needed some political support to, to make all those things happen. So press, which is the infrastructure was like very heavy. But now that we have WordPress, the barrier to do that is, is actually come down. And that's the point, uh, main point of my talk today. So sites can begin with a zero budget and uh, again to begin with something, you need not have complete coding knowledge. When I did Radio Idli, I just had to, I only had the information, uh, uh, the, the skill of just writing emails. So when I logged in, I didn't even know what's a content management system, but when I logged in, there was a, a place wherein I could add title, I could add the content, I could embed Somebody told me you can copy paste this code from YouTube to here and the video will start showing there. That was my, uh, you know, uh, moment of truth or whatever you may say. Now, to learn that, the barrier was minimal as compared to the technology involved in the earlier mediums. So, which is where impact is coming in. And yes, people can begin, uh, let me put a disclaimer here that I'm mentioning an automatic product. So. Even for people who are not very well versed with uh, starting their own websites, there are resources like we have something called as learn.wordpress.com. The whole idea wordpress.com was created was uh, that people who do not have any knowledge about hosting, who do not have any knowledge about uh, the infrastructure part, we are reducing that barrier further by giving a free platform to begin and then gradually upgrade if you like. And yes, all of this it still gives you the freedom to move things out to a self-hosted site. Okay. So the, the beauty is you can now, unlike uh, in the past wherein you had to uh, procure infrastructure and huge distribution, you can actually begin with zero budget. And I can tell you there are quite a few websites around the world uh, written by influential journalists and thought leaders, which still run on either Blogger on blogspot or wordpress.com subdomains as well. But people come to them because of the content, because of the unique ideas they bring in. So yes, it is good to have your own domain, but let that not be a barrier for you to start or for your clients or anyone to start. Let them get a taste of it. Once they are convinced, once they start uh, making money of it, they grow stronger and they can have their own uh, projects coming up. And yes, when we talk about distribution, we today have social media wherein we can create discrete pockets of interest. It's not that I publish a huge billboard wherein there is so much of wastage to people to whom the message is not relevant at all. Yeah. So if I'm having a website on pets and more specifically cats, 
Yeah, so within pets also we got a niche of cats and dogs, right? So if my medium is about managing cats or managing uh, pets, I can create an interest group within various social media, whether it's Instagram, whether it's uh, uh, Facebook or Twitter. And for all you know, there are already groups in all these media wherein people are talking about this, uh, this unique interest that they have. So it doesn't take too much of effort for us who are writing in that particular space to go and check each of these popular social media as to which are these places where my interested users are already talking. Can I get in with a conversation and maybe put, put useful content from my website out there and then make the site popular? That's what I did with my community website. I saw few distinct groups of Yahoo groups, Google groups. Those days, uh, India had a social media uh, thing called as Orkut, which was a, a Google product. Uh, uh, so it was very popular in India and Brazil. So there were groups within that speaking about heritage, about history. But out there, I found younger people wanting to to show their talent and that's where I, I actually got in conversation and created this medium. So distribution also if, if, if you do it properly you can do it beginning with zero cost and then later on you can think about maybe going for the paid uh, way of advertising. Uh, throughout all this there are various ways in which you can start a website for free or some might argue saying that why do I need a website let me create things on Facebook or let me create something on, on Twitter. What you need to be always aware is wherever you are posting the content, who owns it? And tomorrow if I have to move out the content because of some conflict or the other, how portable is it to move it out and you know resurrect the content elsewhere? Now that's where the beauty of WordPress as a ecosystem comes in. So you, suppose you even begin with creating a free website on WordPress.com. You reach some point in time wherein uh, you grow out of all the features available there or you want to move the content to your own website. You can just export the content to exactly the way it is to a self-hosted website. Right? So th that's where uh, I'm speaking both about uh, the either, uh, I mean th there is total freedom. You, co you completely own the content and you can also port it out anytime. And even backward portability, if you say that you don't have the money to money, nor uh, maybe in some cases the traffic of the sites grow and you may want to bring it back to WordPress.com because some users find uh, things, uh, the, the infrastructure of WordPress.com uh, better, they can even bring it back. It works both ways. So the point I'm making here is freedom to move the content and always owning the content. So when you're on Facebook or when you're on Twitter, you're on rent. It's a hotel room. <laughs> Right? It's good for people to meet there, but yes, when you want to call people, you need to call them to your home or to your permanent office. So that's where a website or something developed uh, using WordPress actually helps. So how do you get started to, to spread your own ideas? Think of an area of interest, a unique, of course you can make your own personal blog wherein you write almost about everything that you do perfectly fine. But if you want to make a real powerful medium, it has to be focused on a particular interest or a particular passion, which many others will then follow and map themselves into, right? So you could begin with an area of expertise or passion. In my case, it was my, my little community. In some other cases, people like music. It could be a genre of music. You just keep writing about it on a regular basis. And when you begin, you're not really sure about uh, how much time or how much money you want to invest to reduce your risk you can begin with a free platform or with a low cost platform and what's most important is for any medium uh, what worked for me uh, with Radio Idli project was I defined a weekly periodicity uh, I made it a point to, re uh, to post every Friday I would, and through the week I would gather content or recordings from various people and then I would do a weekly edition and that really brought a bit of stickiness from users and they would really expect content to come on that point, that point in day. So publishing regularly and creating a content calendar uh, really helps. So, so you can create a content calendar around some good events happening per pertaining to the community. It could be some small event that you might be organizing. Uh, different parts of uh, or different uh, subtopics that you might have within your own interest you can you can do that 
and uh, to be very honest something which really helped me was many times we get caught into this loop that my site needs to look like the most beautiful magazine website in the whole world like i want to make a replica of the new york times or uh, the cnn website but if you ask the person how many articles do you do you think the cnn website shows in the front page and how many sections and subsections does it have do you have the same number of complexity no but the bright side is you can begin with something very simple the way it worked for me was i did not have too many sections to begin with so it was just people giving their own recordings singing anywhere between traditional konkani songs to bollywood songs so it was only songs to begin with and then people started coming with photographs of religious and colorful festivals which have been celebrated for hundreds of years in different parts of india of coastal india where my community thrives so so over a period of time i it from a blog it turned into blog with categories so music uh, religious events concerts so we had uh, categories which grew over a period of time and once i had categories in place once i had adequate content in place i could experiment with different themes on a test website and then from a blog website i gradually moved from a blog website with a featured content on top and once i had about say about 100 plus articles i moved on to a magazine theme so my approach rather than design and then let's figure out the content later for a medium it's the other way around first get enough content and let the content direct you or give you ideas to create uh, or let the design follow the amount of content that you get who knows the na the nature of your content would be so unique that it will suggest a different kind of a design not the standard magazine themes so for example you are into podcasts so maybe the nature of your content would would demand a sort of a, a beautiful player on the top right of the site which would align itself in the middle when you uh, look in the mobile phone because it's a very different genre and of course there will be a subscription button if people want to subscribe to the podcast uh, feed itself on their devices so just an idea just a idea out of my mind out here so begin with something simple design can be tweaked further that's another beauty of uh, wordpress.com or wordpress software in general things inside rest in page, pages posts media there are discrete content modules which can be reorganized and displayed in a variety of ways right so indeed content is the king don't be shy of starting with a subdomain and don't be in a hurry to pump in lot of money initially so invest and upgrade gradually as your audience grows and uh, one example of what i mentioned about thought leaders still running on subdomains is uh, a gentleman by the name of ajay shah who is quite an authority in economics in india he is a professor plus many people follow his views on economics if i'm not mistaken it still runs on blogger it's ajay shah dot blogspot dot in so yeah blogspot or blogger is out of our community thing but i'm just giving an example that a medium can exist out of a free itself while it can hold very valuable content so how now we spoke about how do you go about building the website getting your content together and letting the content guide you on the design of the website now the next question how do i let people know about it so many times people i worked on some uh, client projects earlier they were so excited they would publish first on facebook or twitter or instagram and then they would say oh no I'm, since i've already posted it everywhere why do i post it on my website a good approach for a, a person involved in building a medium would be publish first on your website and then cross link it cross link the place those links on twitter facebook or instagram there are of course tool to auto publicize on these platforms the moment you publish over here but personally i am an advocate of writing your own personalized snippets for that particular medium so for, for facebook you can read more lines so write maybe two or three lines out there and then add your uh, content twitter is uh, shorter characters so write something which is catchy which maybe with maybe a hashtag or two and the content goes there instagram is more visual make sure you use a very good uh, image with a square form factor preferably and then add the link so when you publicize make sure that you adapt the content for publicize first on the website 
and then adapt the announcement as per the social media that you are using. And then you share your uh, social uh, links on, based on the way you like. And uh, very important, social media, as we know, resists anything being sold or pushed to them. So as far as possible, try to get into an existing conversation saying that, okay, you are talking about uh, politics in Southeast Asia, here is what I wrote about and here is a, a summary about what I had written. If you need to read more, here is the link. So this is a nice and fair way of plugging your content rather than saying, uh, hey, this is my website, it's the best view on so uh, Southeast Asia, go and read this. So naturally people will say, oh, this person is just uh, blowing his own trumpets and without actually making a conversation. So it has, so the promotion has to be in a very human conversation way and that really helps. Comment genuinely on other similar blogs. So, so if your website is about uh, culture of your particular place, there might be other cultural uh, uh, websites. So whenever you, you write genuine comments or your, your own views out there or appreciation out there, your link appears there naturally and of course you get uh, not necessarily a SEO backlink but real humans will see your link and click when they see that uh, yeah this, this website looks something very similar right so that's how you get uh, virality there are projects like dailypost.wordpress.com wherein there is a topic given and if you link to that topic uh, your, uh, your content shows alongside that of many others who have also posted their, uh, uh, their topic and that actually brings in a lot of traffic from people who are really interested in that uh, the topic which is announced I, I would recommend you uh, to go to this of course i'll give you the slide as well uh, for you to check now coming to the topic of search engine optimization biggest disclaimer this is my personal view <laughs> search engines think of it from google's point of view or from your point of view how many of us over here would like to be cheated none right so imagine google who is making a sincere attempt to show the most relevant results based on some 200 questions, some 200 plus questions as they claim. But Google's agenda is to show, agenda is to make the user happy, not the advertiser slash lister happy. So Google's first agenda is if somebody is asking for the best uh, sushi joint in Singapore, there would be 200 questions, it would try to get the most accurate answer for that based upon the from where the person is asking there are different parameters on it so if i create a website which just happens to have a title of best sushi in singapore and we ex expect to do certain technical tweaks to get our chances brighter it was possible earlier but day by day google doesn't like those tweaks so increasingly google doesn't like things which are done for the search engine but google will love you if you do certain things which improves relevance to the user and experience to the user. So by relevance to the user, you write best sushi joint in Singapore, but in Orchard Street or something which is much more accurate and close, write some good content about uh, your personal experiences, which is, and in a language which the locals will understand. Because guess what, the local will do keywords search using his language, not the standard English. So, you, so to make the user experience better, you need to speak the user's language, you need to, you need to, which automatically translates to good keywords uh, for Google. And second, uh, in the experience part, that's where these, most of the SEO uh, tips actually help, like using a relevant title, the length of the title, the length of your uh, permalink, or using a real permalink rather than slash uh, question mark page ID equals one, two, three, four. It's not that Google hates it. It's like life becomes easier if you use real English in the link. Since the users love it, hence Google loves it. So increasingly you will find any of the search engine updates leading towards a point wherein it will be an exact emulation of a user. Normal users don't see what's the code on this side. They will only see what's the relevance of the content and what is the experience that they get. Things like how does the mobile appear on a, uh, on a mobile device? Uh, the, how does the content appear on a mobile device? So it's likely that your site will rank very well on a desktop, but not as high in mobile because somebody else has got a better mobile, uh, uh, you know, design. So these are the simple 
philosophies of SEO which will increasingly, in my opinion, take over as compared to those tweaks or get your site in top 10 within next 30 days. <laughs> so those techniques will increasingly diminish because naturally Google doesn't want to be cheated by things done for the search engine. They want genuine things done for the user and hence for Google. So when you do that, when you write content focused on your topic of interest, when you write it for the users and you write it in their language, so users searching in their own language will naturally get to your site over a period of time. And that's, so how, the last part of my talk, thanks for bearing with me so long. <laughs> so a marathon of many small steps, it's not that you can create a medium overnight. Most of the things that you see which go viral, die down equally fast. Right? So how many of us still dance to Gangnam style? When it came, it was a rave. We still do dance, but it's not no longer a rave as it happened then. But if you were to look at some of the classic songs, like the old jazz and others, so people, there is still a, an audience which, which is there out there. So what should be your approach? You might hire the best people to write, you might hire the best people to run your website, but on your own, if you were to run a medium out of your own passion, be a level up user yourself. What I mean by level up user is someone who knows almost all the admin, WP admin features, if not the complete PHP code. You need not know the PHP code, you need not know CSS, but you get into WP admin, you should know what each of the, uh, the options on the menu does. Whenever there is a new menu option which appears, you should be curious enough to say, hey, what does this button do? Click. If you've seen Dexter's laboratory, the way DD clicks the button and the thing blows up. <laughs> so here nothing blows up. Uh, upgrade to a paid plan only when it's justified for, and for very clear reasons rather than the glamour of owning it. <laughs> right? And uh, upgrade to a self-hosted uh, wordpress.org website at the right time in case you are beginning with a wordpress.com site. Uh, and hopefully one day, it's my wish that one of your mediums will turn into a WordPress VIP customer or something that requires that scale of service. And, and it's not a thing out of uh, imagination, it's perfectly possible it has happened, right? So I would like to end uh, on this note from the automatic creed, which is like uh, a nice paragraph on uh, which guides us in our work and even in our life, which says uh, that we are in a marathon and, in, and not in a sprint. So no matter you know, where we need to go or how far the goal is, the only way to get there is put one step at a time. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank all of you. So my Twitter ID is uh, at Nagpai. And of course, I'll be here to interact with all of you. Uh, do we have time for any questions or or maybe I think I already stretched my time or how are we with the time? We have time for questions. If anyone has a question, we do uh, have pizzas here. So why don't everyone grab some pizza and get us approaching the idea and ask some questions. Sure, that will be great. Thank you so much. Sure, 15 minutes. Oh, I'm dot on time. <laughs>